75B, welcome back and welcome to week six. This is your overview video. We'll just take a quick stroll through what's going on for the week. And if you've got any questions, of course, you can shoot me a text through Remind. Some of you haven't signed up for it yet. You really should. I get it like that. Um, or Canvas Inbox too. So let's go ahead and start here. Do this first. Watch the video. Always do that first. That's what you're doing right now. Now, looking at what's happening week six, we're moving into a discussion of two very important literary movements, um, not only in the United States, but in other places as well. I think yeah, France would be a good example, too. Uh, and these two literary movements are realism and naturalism. And we may use those words very uh, broadly to mean different things, but realism means something very specific when you're talking about a literary tradition or literature, as does naturalism. We're going to find something similar with a very specific term called modernism. Um, so I'll do my best in the videos to try to um, explain these movements and their importance uh, as they really relate to this course and to other uh, literary literary traditions as well. We'll also be taking a look at Theodore Dreiser, a very important 19th century writer of the time and a bit of a naturalist. We will also take a look at uh, the Latin X American tradition of the corridos, um, loosely translated as running songs. Um, I know a lot of you are familiar with them uh, in your own in your own culture uh, through hearing them on the radio or from your friends, family, etc. And it certainly is an interesting uh, addition to American literary tradition. And I'll make some kind of pop culture connections to that as well. We'll also be looking at Sikalasa, a very important Native American uh, writer. Of the time who talks about her experience growing up and her relationship to the United States and to United States schooling and some of the less proud moments of United States Native American relations. So be on the lookout for that. Coming up Wednesday you've got two readings, Realism and Naturalism, and again, these two sets of pages are going to give you some background on those movements. And then we'll be reading a small excerpt from Sister Carrie. And in some ways, it's going to feel very contemporary. Um, and I don't want to spoil it too much. But I do, I do strongly suggest you listen to the lectures before you start the reading. Um, so listen to the Dreiser rec, uh, lecture. Um, the Dreiser video, I mean, before you start reading it, because that'll kind of give you uh, an idea of what to look at, what's going to stand out. Um, I don't give you any spoilers, so don't worry about that. You've also got week six comments on discussion. And then for Saturday, we're going to be looking at uh, the Corridos themselves. That's a handout that's going to also be uh, as PDF. Uh, a series of short readings from Sikala Sa, uh, Impressions of an Indian Childhood, School Days of an Indian Girl, Soft-Hearted soft Sue, Why I Am a Pagan, and you're going to post two replies. That is more than enough for the week. So we'll be doing that. I will quickly jump us back to the module. And notice here these links, these are all videos. So I start here with Sister Carrie and Dreiser, start talking about realism versus naturalism. Can't quite get through it. Finish it here. That's a, this one's a little bit shorter. And then I've got a lecture, video lecture for you on the Corrido tradition and Sikalasa. And there, as promised, is your PDF for the Corridos. Looking at our discussion for this week, You will notice that you've got two topics. The first one is going to be from last Saturday, your reading, which was um, Suisse and Fa's Miss, Mrs. Spring Fragrance. 
and you know the interesting tension that we see between assimilation and independence and uh in some ways we've already seen that tension when we were looking at abraham kahan's the imported bridegroom um so small differences here though this is more about uh, parallel relationships or lateral relationships those of marriage and courtship as opposed to say like father and daughter or father and son-in-law in the imported bridegroom so um, i'm going to ask you to think about where do they embrace american assimilation of those characters and where do they embrace Chinese tradition? And again, this is an almost universal theme for immigrant culture in the United States. And in Sister Carrie, this is going to be our second one. We're going to be talking about Dreiser's narrator focusing on city life. Those are often vulnerable to its dangers. Remember, this is the time of you know, explosive growth in uh, American cities and European cities as well. The idea of the me uh, of the metropolis takes hold, and including all kinds of uh, contemporary features of the metropolis that we know today. Even though they're spread out even more, such as the department store. Um, really interesting stuff on uh, consumerism and conspicuous consumption and um, the idea of social mobility through consumption um, and also the dangers of uh, using those kinds of tactics so it's a really really fun read very very internal uh, in some ways what do we learn about carrie through this extensive psychological psychological narration in other words we get such an interior uh, front row seat, if that makes sense, into Carrie's uh, thoughts, uh, her values, her feelings, her ambitions, but also like her blind spots too. There's, there's this omniscient narrator that tells us so much about her and kind of foreshadows a little bit about her too. Anyway, it's a very long book. We're only reading a small part of it and I'm not the biggest fan of excerpts but there's only so much we can do in one semester and i think i'd have a rebellion if i tried to make you read all of sister carrie so last question what social and psychological forces are shaping carrie's actions and life story now remember i'm asking you to put down a strong line something that really just kind of stuck out to you that is emblematic or made you question things more or just is rattling around in your in your head and you're not really sure why um should be a lot of fun anyway you've got those two topics same as usual your comments are due wednesday do, 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 and replies are due this coming up saturday and that's all we have for this week you get a little bit of a breather i mean you've already taken the quiz should have that graded this week um, and I'm also going to get you some feedback on your uh, tentative thesis statements for essay number one, too. So we're right in the thick of it. We're about a third way through the course. Hope you're enjoying it so far. And as always, if you've got any questions, big or small, hit me a text on Remind. Email me through Canvas Inbox. Those are the two best ways to get a hold of me. Um, Come to my Zoom advice hours or schedule an appointment at some other time if you can't make my scheduled hours. You can also drop by my office on the Fontana campus on Thursday. And it's 12.15 to 1.15 p.m. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for watching. And I'll be talking to you soon.